I'm Thinking of Ending Things is written and directed by Charlie Kaufman, is based off of a book of the same name by Ian Reid, and stars Jesse Buckley, Jesse Plements, David Thewlis, and Tony Collette. Now, over the course of lockdown, I've been unintentionally familiarising myself with Kaufman's work, whether that be his writing for movies like Being John Malkovich, or his directing with movies like Synecdoche, New York. And through my journey of Charlie Kaufman's work, I've come to figure out that he has a very specific style. Nine out of ten times using these rather odd concepts and making them feel very relatable and emotionally satisfying. However, that is not the case with his new movie, I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Because compared to pretty much every other movie he's had involvement in, whether that be directing or writing, this movie specifically feels like it is trying to alienate its audience right from the word go. Which is probably th why this is going to be the hardest review I've ever done. Because I saw this movie yesterday when it debuted on Netflix, and even though a whole 24 hours has passed since I have seen the film, I still genuinely don't know what to think about it. There are aspects of this movie I really like, there are aspects of this movie that kind of annoy me, but overall I still have no idea what my overall opinion of the movie is. I have no idea whether I love it, I have no idea whether I hate it, I also don't even know if I'm in the middle. This movie may have broken me mentally, because I genuinely still don't know how to feel about this movie. Compared to every other Kaufman project that he's ever done, I at least know where I stand with those movies. Being John Malkovich, I like a lot. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, I absolutely love. Synecdoche, New York, even though I don't adore the movie, I admire the themes and storytelling on display. But with this movie, I, th I feel like I'm still going to be at the exact same place, maybe in a year's time. Because whereas with m a lot of movies that are of a similar ilk to this, I at least have a base feeling towards said movie from one viewing, and that is a feeling that can either grow or diminish over time. For example, 2001 A Space Odyssey is a movie that I thought was pretty good upon first watch, but the more I let it sink in over time, I've actually come to love it a lot more, and it's probably one of my favourite Stanley Kubrick movies. Whereas this movie, I just feel like, no matter how hard I try, no matter how many repeat viewings I give it, no matter how much time I spend thinking about the movie, it's just not going to click with me. And that again, like I said, that will be no matter how much I try, but I just feel like this movie is going to be incredibly hard for me to definitively grab a finalised opinion on. Now, like I said, there are aspects of this movie that I do really like. I think it's gorgeously shot. This is probably Charlie Kaufman's best-looking movie to date in terms of the ones he's directed. Like, Synecdoche, New York is a very good... is a decent-looking movie, but it's more about the storytelling and the characters and the intricacy of that film that is its drawing point. And Anomalisa is also a very good-looking movie as well, but I feel like he's definitely honed his skill in the cinematography and directing aspects to a T in this movie. Like, this is probably the best looking movie he's directed to date, and there is a certain awkward or uneasy atmosphere that seeps out of every single shot of this film, and I just loved the way this movie looked. Also, the acting is fantastic from everyone. Jesse Buckley, Jesse Plements, David Thewlis, and Tony Collette are all fantastic in this movie, especially Jesse Buckley, who has a lot of very wordy and heavy and f uh, philosophical dialogue to spout off throughout the course of this film, but she does it with such ease and makes it almost appear like natural, normal conversation, even though the stuff she is saying is very heavy in terms of the, 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 the subject and the matter that she is talking in. 
and the fact that she's able to build up, pull that off is very impressive. I also appreciate the very uncertain feel this movie has because every scene that happens in this movie just gets more and more unclear as the film goes on because when the film starts you kind of have a general gist of what might be going on but by the time you get to the end I genuinely don't didn't know what I had ju just witnessed. I had a general grasp on a few specific things, but in terms of the overall story and the overall movie as a whole, it throws a lot of curveballs at you. And those curveballs might not be very obvious, but they're curveballs more in a sense of like, right, I don't quite know where you're going with that, but it seems to just be going on that curveball line. And it throws you in so many different directions that you can. I would say after about one viewing, maybe if you haven't read the book, because I personally haven't read the book myself, but if you're just watching the movie as it is, without any context of the book, I feel like after one viewing, you will get the gist, the general gist of about 30 or 40% of what actually happens in the movie. Compared to, you know, another recent release like Tenet, where you will get the general gist of the overall story from one viewing, and to understand the deeper themes of what was going on and how you know complex the story structure was in that film, you will need to see it a few more times and let it linger. Whereas this movie, you'll only get the gist of about 20 or 30% of the overall film. You won't actually get... Like, I still don't know what the overall story is of this movie. Like I said, there is an initial premise that it does set up, but it pretty much goes off on its own tangent very, very quickly. And again, that's probably stuff that happens in the book. Like I said, I haven't read the book. But this is... <sighs> Compared to his other work, this is Kaufman's most inaccessible movie to date. You can see that as a positive, and you can see that as a negative. Me, personally, I don't know how to feel about that, because at times throughout this movie, it can come across as storytelling brilliance like there are a few scenes in particular I won't give away any specific ones but there are a few scenes throughout this movie where I was like I'm not quite sure what happened there but it was so brilliantly handled and I can I think I am starting to grasp what you were trying to do with that scene however there are a lot of other scenes throughout the movie especially in the last 20 to 30 minutes of the movie where I was just like okay I think you've now completely lost me, Kaufman. Now, when I said there are things that kind of annoy me throughout this movie, I'm specifically referring to the scenes that take place in the car, because I knew that because of the premise of the movie, which is Jesse Buckley's character is going to visit uh, the parents of her new boyfriend with her boyfriend. So I knew that there would be some scenes involving the couple in a car. I didn't realise it would be almost all of the movie. I mean, there are obviously scenes not taking place in the car, but I would say a good... I would say a good quantity of this movie. There's a good, like, 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes dedicated to the car. There's about a 20, 30 minute section at the start, and then after the bit where they've actually gone and visited their parents, there is another 20... 25 minute segment in the car and these segments wouldn't be that bad like they are well shot and well acted but they wouldn't be that bad if the dialogue wasn't so dense in terms of what they are actually talking about for the first half of the movie that first initial driving sequence i thought was okay it was bearable and i could understand what was trying to happen and the little seeds that kaufman was trying to plant in that scene you know, worked, and I, I was on board with it. But when you get to the second one, it just kind of confirms that the stuff they are talking about, though it is probably relevant to the overall themes and messages of the film, is just way too dense to fully take on board in such a, such a confined space for such a long period of time. It's like you are forced to listen to this conversation as it happens in the car. And because it is so such a dense and fully packed conversation they're having that may not make sense to everybody, it's very hard to fully take on board from one viewing or maybe even two viewings. Like, 
like I said, I watched this movie yesterday and I still don't fully understand everything that they were talking about in those car journeys. So in terms of that aspect, I do I, I, I do get the point of them being there, but they do kind of outstay their welcome in a few specific points throughout the movie, especially considering how long they go on for and how heavy and deep and dense the conversations actually are in the car do make them very hard for any you know normal moviegoer to sit through if you're not if you're not you know well versed with Kaufman's style or the book and how it's supposed to go then those scenes will definitely be a turn off for a lot of people and for me I'm kind of 50-50 on them because of the reasons I just said as I said at the start of the video this is a very hard movie for me to talk about because I genuinely still don't know how to feel about this movie. There are some aspects I like, there are some aspects that don't quite work for me, and there are other aspects I'm still trying to make my mind up on, and I feel like I'm gonna be like that mentally for a very long time to come. I don't love this movie, I don't hate it, but I also don't know how to feel about this movie, and I feel like that's what Kaufman is trying to do with this film. He's trying to specifically make his audience feel uneasy and make them feel uncertain about everything, or just like the characters are in the movie. Which is why I don't think I can give this movie a rating out of 10. At least not yet, anyway. It's going to be a very, very long time before I have just an inkling of a concrete opinion on this film. I know you're probably wanting to see this review to have a definitive answer. Like, what did you think about the movie? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you not too sure about the film? But I'm afraid I can't give you a concrete answer about this movie from my personal opinion, because the movie doesn't give you concrete answers to a lot of things. It shows you everything in such a surreal and dreamlike manner, which again is another aspect of the movie that I like. The whole dreamlike aspect of the movie works really well in a few specific scenes. But the movie is so inaccessible and alienating, especially for newer audiences, which I feel like a lot of people are going to be in that category because it is going straight to Netflix, that Kaufman has created this thing that I feel is only going to appeal and really connect with die-hard Kaufman fans. And I am a fan of Kaufman's, but even I found this movie hard to connect with and hard to grasp. So guys, that was my kind of review uh, for I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I apologise, like I said, if you wanted something concrete, like if you wanted to hear my definite finalised opinion on this movie, but I feel like a final concrete opinion for this film, at least from me anyway, isn't going to happen for a long, long time. But I wanted to express my thoughts on the film in some form, which is why I wanted to do this video for it. But yeah, I apologise that this maybe isn't the most comprehensive review you're going to see of this movie out there. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye.